Have you ever wondered why too much water can kill a plant, yet less water can improve the quality of wine? It may sound counterintuitive, but it's true. Water is vital to our health. It hydrates us, flushes out toxins, and keeps our bodies functioning at their peak. But, like with plants and wine, there's a delicate balance to maintain. Overwater a plant and it drowns. The roots can't breathe and the plant wilts. Conversely, give a grapevine just enough water and it concentrates its energy into producing flavorful grapes, the foundation of a fine wine. This, in essence, is the paradox of water. Now let's apply this paradox to our bodies. What if, like the grapevine, we could improve our health by controlling our water intake? This leads us to the concept of fasting, a practice as old as humankind itself, yet with new insights that are revolutionizing our understanding of health and wellness. Just like plants and wine, the human body also has a unique relationship with water. When we talk about fasting, two main types come to mind, water fasting and dry fasting. Water fasting is a period of abstinence from all food but not from liquids. People on a water fast can drink water, herbal teas, and other non-caloric beverages. Dry fasting, on the other hand, is a more intense form of fasting where one refrains from both food and liquids, yes, even water. Now imagine a cleanup crew that works overtime when you fast. This process is called autophagy. Your body starts to recycle damaged proteins and cellular components, cleaning house and making room for new healthy cells. It's like spring cleaning for your body. Fasting, whether water or dry, stimulates this process of autophagy. It's like hitting the reset button on your body's cellular processes. While they sound extreme, these fasting methods have some fascinating health benefits. Did you know your body can produce its own water? It's a fascinating process called endogenous water production. This happens when our body burns fat, releasing hydrogen, which combines with the oxygen we breathe, producing water. Yes, our bodies are that remarkable. Now let's talk about dry fasting. It's a process where we abstain from both food and liquids. While it may seem counterintuitive, dry fasting can actually enhance detoxification more than water fasting. Here's why. Without an external water source, our bodies are nudged to burn more fat. Not only for energy, but also for water, accelerating the detoxification process. And it doesn't stop there. Dry fasting also improves mitochondrial function. Mitochondria, often referred to as the powerhouses of our cells, thrive under the stress of a dry fast, leading to more efficient energy production. So, by dry fasting, we're not only detoxifying our bodies, but we're also boosting our cellular energy production. If you think your genes control your health, think again. Let's delve into the world of epigenetics, a complex yet fascinating field that explores how our lifestyle choices can influence our genes. Yes, you heard that right. Your genes are not your destiny. They are more like a blueprint, and you, my friend, are the architect. So what is epigenetics, you ask? Epigenetics is the study of how our behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way our genes work. Unlike genetic changes, these are reversible and do not alter the DNA sequence, but they can still be passed down to future generations. Now, let's talk about fasting, especially dry fasting, and its relation to epigenetics. Fasting and other stressors, like cold therapy, can stimulate survival mechanisms within our body. These survival mechanisms are a part of our evolutionary heritage, designed to help us adapt to changes in our environment. Dry fasting pushes your body to adapt in ways that regular fasting doesn't. It's like a deep, rejuvenating sleep for your cells. They wake up refreshed, stronger, and more resilient. This is because dry fasting triggers a process called autophagy, your body's natural recycling program. Damaged proteins are broken down and used for energy, leaving only the healthy ones behind. This in turn leads to enhanced cellular function and longevity. But the magic doesn't stop there. Dry fasting can also influence epigenetic changes, potentially turning on genes that enhance survival and turning off genes that cause harm. This means that by choosing to dry fast, you could be influencing your genes to work in a way that promotes better health and longevity. Talk about taking control of your health. So, not only is dry fasting a powerful detoxifier and energy booster, but it can even influence our gene expression. Before we dive into how you can start your dry fasting journey, let's take a moment to connect. If you're finding this content valuable and want to continue exploring the fascinating world of health and wellness with us, hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. You won't want to miss what's coming next. And if you know someone who could benefit from this information, don't hesitate to share this video. Knowledge is power and sharing is caring. 
We also love hearing from you. So drop a comment below sharing your thoughts about fasting or your own experiences if you've tried it before. Your insights could be the inspiration someone else needs to embark on their own health journey. Now with that said, let's explore how you can safely try dry fasting. Now you might be wondering, how can I safely try dry fasting? As with any new health practice, it's crucial to start small and gradually increase the intensity. If you're new to fasting, consider starting with intermittent fasting, perhaps a 16 to 18 hour window without food. This allows your body to adjust to the sensation of fasting. During your eating window, drinking of water is essential to stay well hydrated. Remember, even in your journey to explore dry fasting, hydration is a key component of overall health. Hence, load up on fluids during your eating window to your well prepared for your fasting period. Now, for those of you who are habitual coffee or other caffeinated beverages drinkers, potential withdrawal symptoms might be a concern. This is where alternatives like green coffee extract can be beneficial. They can help you evade caffeine withdrawal without breaking your dry fast. Once you've mastered intermittent fasting and hydration management, you might feel ready to experiment with dry fasting. Here's an important cautionary note. Never dry fast for more than 12 hours in a day and the fasting period should ideally be from sunrise to sunset. As always, start small. Consider a 12-hour dry fast begin with and gradually you can extend that period. However, always remember, it's not a competition or a challenge. It's about tuning into your body, understanding its signals, and employing practices like dry fasting to bolster your overall health. You're not aiming for a record-breaking fast, you're striving for sustainable beneficial change. As you commence this journey, your body might in a variety of ways. Some of you might feel more energetic while others might need a few days to adjust. Some might find the experience deeply rejuvenating, akin to quality sleep. Everyone's body is unique, hence your dry fasting experience will be unique too. Proceed at a slow pace, experiment, learn, adjust, and most importantly, your body's signals. Dry fasting can offer a myriad of benefits, from enhanced detoxification and autophagy, to improved mitochondrial function and epigenetic advantages. However, it's equally vital to approach it with care and mindfulness. The goal is to enhance your health, so listen to your body, start slow and see how dry fasting can benefit you.